Welcome, I'm Anna Bowens, Instructor of Architectural Studies. In this video, we will learn how to create a rendering of a perspective structure. Even though plan views and elevations provide information about a proposed building, the average person may have difficulty visualizing the intended design. To combat this issue, architects will create pictorial drawings, rendered plan views or elevations, or scaled models to help further convey details. Pictorial drawings include perspective drawings or presentation drawings. A perspective drawing is drawn from the perspective of a person standing near the home or object being drawn. There are three basic types of perspective drawings. They are one point or parallel perspective, two point or angular perspective, and three point or oblique perspective. Each type is named for the number of vanishing points used to create it. Presentation drawings are used to show a finished structure. Generally, these drawings are rendered to enhance their appearance. Presentation drawings are usually pictorial views, but elevations are occasionally used for presentations as well. Presentation drawings require a degree of realism that is accomplished through rendering. Rendering is the process of representing or depicting an object or scene in an artistic form by adding color and shading. Today, most rendering is done on the computer. However, traditional methods are still used for special purposes or to create specific effects. Elements to include while rendering range from the texture and color of material used to adding entourage elements to help portray the scene, scale, and use of a building. When viewing a residential building elevation, we can start by adding in the texture of our building materials. Using a pencil, we can start to add in the grid work of brick, stone, or cedar shake siding, as well as any vinyl siding or specific window or door materials. Adding in any entourage elements to the front of this building is also beneficial to a viewer. Entourage includes people, vegetation, and any other miscellaneous elements that help create a lifelike appearance. Adding in these elements adds scale to the drawing and presents the design more clearly. Once we have our textures and entourage drawing and pencil, we can then finalize those lines with an ink pen. When rendering in ink, we can create finer details and add shading to our facade. Shading can be accomplished using several different methods, including using a series of parallel lines, a dot pattern, or solid shading. At this point in the rendering process, we can choose to add color to our drawings. Methods for manually adding in color include, but are not limited to colored pencils, ink or markers, painting using acrylic or watercolor, and sometimes airbrush. Most computer programs that allow rendering will pull in a library of materials and the colors can be adjusted to the desired hue. To make your rendering look more realistic, you will need to pay close attention to the source of lighting to add shading and shadows to your drawing. Adding a key light to the front of the scene, a fill light to one side of the scene, and a backlight toward the rear of the house is a method most often used and is called triangle lighting. Computer programs with advanced rendering functions typically allow you to place and adjust lighting sources. Every lighting source we create produces a shaded area and a shadow. Shadows should accurately represent the shape of the object casting them. These details will help your drawing appear more realistic. I hope this has given you a good understanding of how to create a rendering. Practice on your own to develop and hone your skills. To learn more, look for our other videos on architectural tools and techniques.